Hello and happy Purim from all of us at Jew Talking To Me. You all know about my ongoing love affair with Jewish penicillin, but I also love a good old Jewish joke. Though if laughter is the best medicine, why do we need chicken soup? There's a guy on a train just sitting there minding his own business reading a newspaper and uh, a Jewish woman comes up to him and says, so, excuse me, are you Jewish? And he goes, no, no, I'm not. Sits back down. Five minutes later, she taps him on the shoulder and said, are you sure you're not Jewish? He says, no, honestly, I'm not. So he sits back down. Five minutes later, says, honestly, you're Jewish, aren't you? Says, no, really, I'm not, I'm not Jewish. Goes, sits down. Another ten minutes, thinking, look, I'm sorry, but you are Jewish, aren't you? He says, yes, all right, I'm Jewish. He says, funny, you don't look Jewish. Moishi and uh, Iva, let's call them Iva, oh. are walking down the road and uh, a funeral cortege that drives past and uh, Moishi takes his hat off, tips his hat to the hearse. And I said, that's so nice, that's so respectful, you should do that. And he said, well, I was married to her for 50 years. Uh, my favourite Jewish joke is two old women are in a restaurant in the Catskills, um, the upstate Jewish resort in, uh, in, in New York. One of them says, um, boy, the food at this place is just terrible. And the other one nods and says, yeah, I know, and such small portions. Oh, our neighbours, they've been married for 50 years and I always ask them what's the secret of their long marriage. And uh, oh, I'll say Moisha again. Moisha says that when they got married, they, uh, they made a pact that no matter what happens, they'll always go out twice a week. And he said they've never missed a week. Uh, Moisha goes out on Mondays and Wednesdays and Sadie goes out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> you know, he says, Amy and, um, and Rachel and... Uh... They've had an argument, they're married a couple, they've had an argument and, and Jaime goes off to work and he thinks I'd better do something and he, he gets like a, he buys like a dozen red roses and he brings them back to the house and Rachel opens the front door and, and uh, Jaime offers her these flowers and Rachel takes him by the tie and leads him upstairs and uh, she takes him by the tie into the bedroom and she takes off all her clothes and she lies back in what can only be, be called um, an accommodating position. And he says, uh, Jaime, this is for the roses. And Jaime says, haven't you got a vase? There was this mother and she had a birthday and her three sons decided to give her presents that would outdo each other. So the oldest son gave his mother a mansion, a huge mansion. The second son gave his mother a stretch limousine with a driver. The third son gave his mother a parrot who had spent 10 years learning the five books of Moses and knew them off by heart. So the sons get together with the mother and ask the mother how she likes the presents. So the mother looked at the oldest son and said, a mansion, such a big house. What am I going to do with such a big house? It costs a fortune to eat. I only spend my time in one room anyway. Beh. She looks at the second son and she says, a stretch limousine? Where am I going? I don't go anywhere. And a driver? So I have to feed someone else? Beh. She looks at the third son and she says, you, you know what a mother wants. The chicken was delicious. I think this is a lovely, beautiful joke, but it is set in a horrible setting. And Rachel knows this joke because I've told it to her before. And it involves a line of Jews who are all lined up with Nazis with guards pointing guns at them. And one guy steps forward and goes, you Nazi bastards, you'll rot in hell for this. And his wife just goes, Jaime, don't make a scene. My favourite Jewish jokes are probably mine. Uh, no. <laughs> my my favourite, I think my favourite is... Uh, one of David Baddiel's. I'm going to butcher it, but and it was particularly nice because I went to see his show with my mum, and it was about it was about Jewish mothers. I think it's something along the lines of my mum is so proud of me, even if I was drowning, she'd be like, my son is drowning. My son who got two one from <laughs> Cambridge University is drowning. <laughs> Alright, here's a quick one for you. What's the difference between orange juice and lemon juice? The lemon juice are more Hasidic. Come on! When I was younger, I also blamed Jewish people for all my problems and thought they were part of a conspiracy to control and ruin my life. Turns out they were just being good parents. Well, the two old Jewish guys talking on the phone and one says to the other, Jacob, how's that, how's that memory problem that you've been having? And Jacob says, 
Charles, it's absolutely wonderful now because I've been taking these new pills, memory pills, and they're, they're wonderful. His friend says, oh, that sounds good. Um, what are they called? He said, oh, hang on a second. What, what do you call that, that flower? It comes in lots of different shades. It's got lovely smell and it's got prickles. And his friend says, do you mean a rose? He said, yeah, yeah. And he turns around and he said, Rose, what's the name of my memory pills? A rabbi gets marooned on a desert island and he's forgotten about for five years until a search party finds him on the island. And he says, oh, thank goodness you've come to find me. Look, I've built a whole society. Here I've built a school. Here I've built a hospital. Here I've built a shul. And here I've built another shul. And I said, another shul? Yeah, that one I wouldn't be seen dead in. Four Jewish mothers meet for lunch every Wednesday and they're sitting around the table in their favourite cafe and one of them sighs. And the next one says... Oi. And the next one says, Oi vey. And the fourth woman says, I thought we said we weren't going to talk about our children today. Old man walking through the desert, pick the lamp, the genie comes out of the lamp and says, Old man, for two wishes. Old man thinks about it, takes a stick from sand, starts to draw a big map. A huge map, it gets bigger and bigger, it's a map of the Middle East. The old man is saying, for my first wish, I wish that all of these countries, Yemen and Saudi Arabia, Iraq and Iran, Palestine and Israel, that we could all just get on as one big happy family, live harmoniously. And the genie says, it's just, it's just never going to happen. This is thousands of years of religious divide and persecution and this it simply just just won't happen. What's your second wish? And the old man goes, wow. Ah. For my second wish, I wish that my wife, Judith, would perform sex just once. And the genie looks at him and says, let me take another look at the map. So Maury and Sadie are in their 80s and they decide that they really, it's time for them. They want to go to Germany. They want to see the Holocaust Memorial and they're going to make visits to the camps. And they just feel that before they end their lives, they need to pay this kind of respect. So they go and they take a bus out to the first camp. And about a half an hour into their visit there, Maury says something to Sadie that makes her so angry that she leaves. And then she doesn't come back. And then Maury's out of his mind. He goes back to the hotel. Hours go by. She does not come back. Finally, he hears the key in the lock. She comes in. He says, Sadie, Sadie, I'm so sorry. I, I don't know what I was thinking, but whatever it was that made you feel so terrible, I'm so sorry. I'm just glad you're OK and you're back. And she puts her hands on her hips and says, you ruined Auschwitz for me. OK, so surely he's coming from Stanford Hill and he thinks he'll nip down into Stoke Newington where there's this great new Spanish restaurant. He's heard a tapas bar with all these fantastic things. So he sneaks in, he goes in, sits down at a great table. The waiter says, what do you want? So he says, you know what I want? I want a suckling pig. I've been craving a suckling pig. This is the, I heard they do a fantastic suckling pig here and that's what I want which is, of course, and it's the speciality. So they arrive with great ceremony with the dish and the silver thing on the top and they pull it off and there is this gorgeous thing, molten and beautiful with an apple in its mouth like this and it's looking up there and, and Shmuel is so excited, he's about to tuck in and just then on their walk, their Sunday walk, the rabbi and his family walk past the window and he pops in, he says, hi Shmuel, and he looks at Shmuel with his mouth, with his eyes like this and he's got the knife in his fork and Shmuel says, I ordered an apple and this is how it comes here. It's Jaime and Maury are walking down the street one day and all of a sudden they pass a church and outside the church there's a huge sign that says conversions. We pay £500. And Jaime looks at Maury and he goes, Maury, £500 is a lot of money. You should go and get converted. And Maury says, OK, pay for me. So Maury goes inside. An hour goes by and Jaime's pacing up and down. Two hours goes by and eventually, after five hours, Maury emerges and Jaime goes rushing up here and he goes, Well, did you get the money? And Maury says, Oh, you people, is that all you would think about? 
Uh, my favourite joke is from uh, our old friend uh, Arnold Brown, um, the, I think of the, the, the greatest Jewish joke ever. He used to come on stage and say, I'm Scottish and Jewish, two racial stereotypes for the price of one. I, I'm going to quote an Arnold Brown line. He said, people say to me, what is Jewish people's contribution to society? And I always say, we've already given. Uh, it's about a chap who wants to get his watch fixed and uh, he's walking along the high street and he sees uh, a watch shop, the window is full of clocks and watches, dashes into the shop, puts his watch down on the counter and said, I'd like to get my watch fixed please, I need a new battery. And the chap at the counter says, I'm really sorry we don't fix watches. He says, but, but, but all the watches and the clocks in the window, what do you do here? He says, actually I'm a mahal. Uh, I'm not hell, it's a mahal. He says, well, I, I'm a ritual circumciser. So, so, so what with the watches and the clocks? So what do you want me to put in the window? An old Jewish man is knocked over by a car in Golders Green. The crowds gather before a paramedic arrives and gently rests the old man's head on his knee. Sir, are you comfortable, says the paramedic. I'll make a living. I once went on a date uh, with a girl who, um, uh, who I was, you know, she said to me, tell me about yourself. And I was like, you know, my name's Howard. London, uh, I'm a Jew. Uh, and she genuinely turned around to me and said, oh, a Jew. Jews are scared of dogs, aren't they? To which I said, you know, Jews aren't scared of dogs. Jews are scared of uh, everything. And here are three things you will never hear in a kosher restaurant. This is good value for money. Aren't those children well behaved? No more for me, thanks. I'm full. A group of five Jewish women are eating lunch in a cafe and a nervous waiter approaches comes up to the table and says, Ladies, is anything okay? Jewish man goes to the job centre looking for work. Guy says to him, what do you want to do? He said, I want to be a lumberjack. So he said, can you be a lumberjack? You're a little Jewish man. He said, do you have any experience? The guy says, sure I do. He said, 10 years experience. The fellow says, where? Jewish guy says, the Sahara forest. The guy says, don't you mean the Sahara desert? Jewish guy says, now. As a kid in school, I noticed in uh, in uh, gym class, you know, the, great, the greatest athletes were the Christian kids. They really were the best. The Jewish kids were not good athletes. They really weren't. I mean, I always thought as a kid that the word uh, gym was short for Goyan. The Moyo, the guy that does the circumcisions, who's always nearsighted, which would scare every mother to death. He's always nearsighted. He's walking down the street and he's reading the Talmud because that's what Moyos do. He's reading the Talmud, but suddenly, out of nowhere, this guy comes, throws his arms around him and says, Rabbi, Rabbi, thank you, thank you. The lawyer looks at him, he has no idea who this is. He says, for what? And the guy says, because it fits everybody. This is one of my dad's favourite jokes, so I thought I'd share it with you now about a man who falls on hard times. So he goes to the synagogue to pray and he's sat there and he's talking to God and he's saying, God, please, just this week, let me win the lottery, please. It's just what I need. He goes away and he comes back the following week, having not won the lottery. He sat in synagogue again he's saying, God, please, please, things are really hard. I'm about to lose my business. I just need to win the lottery. He goes away and of course he doesn't win the lottery he comes back the following week and he sat there saying please are about to foreclose on my business i'm going to lose absolutely everything just would you let me win the lottery and suddenly there's a crash of thunder and a bolt of lightning and a voice from above calls down to him mr cohen meet me halfway buy a ticket my favorite jewish joke is actually one that's also been used in an old episode of Columbo, and it goes as follows. A Jewish seamstress is walking home, and um, she walks past this guy. And he opens his coat and stands like this in front of this old Jewish woman. And she says, oh my God, do you, you call, call that, that aligning? Lining? Thanks to all of our guests for sharing their jokes. Happy Purim, and we'll see you soon for Series 3 of Jew Talker to Me. Al, what's your favourite Jewish joke? Well, that is so, you're assuming, you know, that I have a favourite Jewish joke that that assumes it's kind of like a leading question, isn't it? Because I've heard millions and millions of Jewish jokes, and now I have to go through my mind and think what's my favorite Jewish jokes. Do you have any idea how many Jewish jokes I've heard in my life? I've been along alive a long time. I've heard tons and tons of Jewish jokes. First of all, I'd have to remember them all. I'm not going to remember them all. I'm going to remember some of them, right? And what if I don't remember the ones I really love because I'm only remembering some of them? Then I remember some of them. Now I have to choose among the some of them I remembered what my favorite is. And what the, the word favorite is just so loaded. What's my favorite? On what level?
on the level of the word usage, on the level of the timing, on the level of the punchline. There's so many levels to favorite. And how do you even choose? Like if you're really in the moment and present, maybe all jokes are your favorite, everything's your favorite. It's just a bizarrely loaded question. But I'll tell you what my favorite Jewish joke is. Uh, I forgot it actually. <laughs> 